Why are my hardwood floors always dirty? Forgot to sweep them. As you can see, Jason's not the smarter of the two brothers. I'm going to tell you why your hardwood floors are always dirty. Good morning. I'm Ted Cook. This is my brother, Jason Cook. We're with reallycheapfloors.com. And today we're excited to answer more of the questions that our customers have sent in. Aren't we excited? Oh, yeah. We're tickled to death. Yeah. Yeah. Um, today's session is going to start with an interesting question. Um, can you stain white oak to match red oak? Jason? No. White oak's white, red oak's red. There you have it. If you need red oak, get red oak. Another problem when you, can ha you can have when you're trying to stain one floor to match another one is that a floor will patina over time. You could take red oak that came out of the exact same box five years apart, apply the same exact stain out of the same exact can, and it still won't match, right Jason? Right, yeah. It just, it, it don't even have to be sunlight, it's just your home lights and just natural light changes the color over years. Right, and uh, we've had customers that tried to match it exactly. Well, let's say that you got lucky and you hit it almost perfect. In six months, it's not gonna match anymore. So you gotta be careful there. You, um, be willing to accept that it's not going to match perfect. Here's one for you. Do wood floors increase home value? Yes, we have, uh, we've talked with um, home appraisers. Uh, hardwood will always raise the value on your home. Um, if you don't, get, you know, if you're not buying too expensive floor, it's actually a really good investment. Certainly some of our cabin or builder grade floors that you can buy for a dollar, dollar fifty a foot, you stick that in a house and it's gonna raise the value more than the money you spent. Um, that being said, depending on the appraiser, some of the appraisers like LVP. Yeah. Almost as well. It won't it, it won't raise the, the value quite as much as hardwood, but it it's it won't decrease it. it either. It won't decrease it either. That's exactly uh -huh. right. Well here's you another one. Why do I have to answer so many today? Ah, uh, you're you feel like I feel like you're on a roll. Okay. Okay. Why is white oak more expensive than red oak? I forgot about that question. I read that last night. Um, I'm gonna, I'm actually going to explain this as well as I can. It's going to take a few minutes. Um, in the wood business, wood is a commodity. Okay, and not unlike a, a butcher. Um, a wood manufacturer or sawmill has to sell every species they have and every cut of wood that they have, all the different grades, just like the butcher does. You know, why, is, why does prime rib cost more than sirloin? He, they, you know, when the butcher bought it, he bought the whole cow. It all costs the same price. Why is there different prices? Well, it's because of, of market demand. Ironically enough, why do demand most of the time is driven by the liquor business. Whiskey is aged in white oak barrels because of the difference in porosity and the, and the, the color it leaves, you know, there's a lot to that. A lot of white oak goes to make whiskey barrels. Did you know that? Mm -mm. Yes, it does. Um, so, and, and old whiskey barrels are used for wine storage. So there, you would think, well, if you've got a bunch of wine barrels made, why do you need any more of them? Or, whiskey barrels because they rotate they're always rotating through by the time they get out to your local um, garden center they've been used for a couple of years but they the lifetime is determined by what they're used for um, so why is white oak more expensive than red oak because the demand there's not quite as much white oak out there just like there's not as much prime rib on a uh, cow as there is hamburger and because there is such a specific market for the white oak that's why it's higher not bad. You learned something. Yeah, didn't I did. You? All, All right. right. Let's see if you. Oh, here you go. Here's you one. All right. What's the difference between black walnut wood and walnut wood? There is none. Uh, all, black. Yeah, the little one's black. Um, all of the real walnuts sold in the U.S. to my best of my knowledge is is American walnut or black walnut. Occasionally, we'll see some imported products that um, they'll stick an Americanized name on them. So it may not be a true walnut. It might be. Who knows? Something we can't even pronounce. That's that's coming from South America or from from Siberia. So it's not uncommon for those to be marketed with an American name, and you'll see walnut on there. 
Uh, we sell quite a bit of walnut or have in the past. Our, our biggest supplier is out of the walnut business uh, short term. It's just a little hard to get to. It's a beautiful wood. We had some rift and quartered last mm -hmm. year that we did really well with. It was an interesting wood. But walnut tends to be a little bit soft, but it's gorgeous. I love it. It also patinas a great deal. I saw a job last year. It went in as a really dark, warm colored floor. And a year later, it had almost a gray tint to it, which surprised me. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting job. All right, how about you answer something? Okay, go ahead. Should baseboards touch the floor? Yes. Because after you lay your floor, you come back and put your baseboard down. Well, you don't want to leave a gap between it and the floor. It'd look kind of crazy. So you, I mean, you don't shove it down on it. You just let it sit on top. So there's no expansion issues. You don't have no. to worry about it. No, not and it's sitting floor. on top. You know, if your baseboard is already down, you don't want to put your floor tight against it. But, right. yeah, just put it down on top of it. If your baseboard was already down and you do a new install, you would come back with quarter round. Yeah, you would not put it tight and put a quarter round down around it. I don't like quarter round, do you? I don't mind it. Um, I'd really but take the most, baseboard off and most put it most remodels, though, you're better off putting quarter round because you're liable, you know, because you got a old colored baseboard, you break a piece, you can't match it just right. like you couldn't match it if you hadn't put a new, uh, a new board in the floor, right. you know. By the same token, baseboard most of the time isn't too expensive. Right, you could put it all new baseboard all around. New baseboard. What's yep. the baseboard cost? Fifty cents. Around fifty, sixty cents a foot. And quarter yeah. rounds, what? Twenty-five or thirty? Yeah. So your choice. You can pull the baseboard off or whatever you want to do. Okay, let's see here. Here's an easy one. Does laminate flooring feel like wood? No. Why not? How's it different? It's a floating floor. You know, anytime you have a floating floor, you could feel a little movement just because it has an underlayment under it where most of your woods are nailed down and they're solid to the floor. So it just feels a little more just solid. Just feels a little, spongy. yes, not as spongy. Okay. All right, here's one. Is solid wood flooring scratch resistant? I'll take that one. Um, that's a little bit hard to answer. We, there's two different things that people consider scratches. One is that surface treatments on top. We'll simplify it and say it's polyurethane. And if you take an, uh, a piece of steel wool to that and you scuff on it, you know, will it resist scratches? Yes, with, with the new aluminum oxide additives that are, in, in, that are added to the polyurethane today, it's extremely tough, okay? So uh, that, that abrasive wear is not near the issue today it was, say, 20 years ago before they started using aluminum oxide. Um, but a lot of people consider scratches to be dense in the wood. You know, if, if you slide your couch and, oh, the little piece is missing off the bottom and it scratches your floor, that's not a scratch, that's a gouge, okay? And that's caused by whatever's gouging into that floor is harder than the wood that you have on the floor, okay? If you have a pine floor, just about anything will gouge oh, yeah. it. If you've got a hickory floor, you know, it's, it's going to be much harder to gouge. Um, and then we can get into, well, is the gouge there or is the scratch there, but can you tell it? With the, with the hand-scraped and wire-brushed floors that we have out there, they certainly minimize it. But to answer the question as it was asked, is solid wood flooring scratch-resistant? All floors with aluminum oxide and the polyurethane are scratch-resistant. Just not scratch-proof. Just not scratch-proof. Excellent answer. Yeah, good one. Good, good add. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. <laughs> Should my flooring be the same throughout the house? Uh, personal preference, my opinion. If I was, you know, if it's a house you're going to live in the rest of your life, do it the way you like it. Yeah. If it was a house that I was thinking about maybe selling in a couple of years, I probably would run the same through the whole house because it just, it's a better flow. And I think it'd help the value of your house instead of changing up mm -hmm. the colors. I think it has to do with the type of flooring. Well, too. I do too. Uh, I've, I've been in houses where they use multiple LVPs and it looked, right. it looked a little tacky, I'll be honest yeah. with you. Um, but if you was putting like wood and then wanted the tile pattern in your kitchen, yeah, right. that would. But. Or, or using, I, I've uh, seen houses where they'll use walnut in one bedroom, maple right. in another. I, I like right. that. I, I like the difference. And in like I said, it's a personal preference thing, right. you know. So. What's the easiest flooring to clean? Uh, wood or LVP, they're both clean about the same. I don't think one's easier than the other. 
those things don't put detergent on them. Right. We touched no on a little bit. Make so, sure you use a no rinse yeah. cleaner and, and run that mop. Yeah. Look at that. There's one page shot. One gone. Now, okay. What is the easiest flooring to install yourself? That would be LVP. It's a, the easiest do-it-yourself floor, I think, out there. It's a click together. Um, you don't have to put any underlayment down. It just goes directly to your subfloor. Um, and you don't need a lot of space. You know, you don't need an air compressor or anything like yeah. that to do it. Um, very minimal tools. You don't even really have to have a saw. It's easier with a saw. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can do it with a straight edge and razor knife if you want to. And when you're doing floor installation, and between the two of us, we've done quite a few over the years, uh, a big part of it can be floor preparation. You know, especially with a, a direct glue tile or a direct glue roll goods, um, your floor has to be relatively smooth. And it's, there's been many jobs, we spent more time getting the floor acceptable than we did installing the actual floor. Right. Or, or maybe, you know, you're talking about taking stuff up. If you're taking up some glued down carpet, then you have to get that floor really smooth for some applications, whereas a, a, a snap together LVP, you can just about go over a gravel pile as long as there's not big high spots. Um, now, there are a couple of, there's, there's actually three different locking systems in LVP. Um, the the better ones, the easier ones, cost more money, and and it's kind of kind of neat the way they do locking systems. Of those three, there's three different companies that own them. Well, there's a hundred manufacturers of LVP, so when they use the different locking systems, they have to pay a royalty to the, the companies that own those. Um, Unilin back back years ago before Mohawk bought them, they had the best laminate locking system in the world. Hands down, it was the best. And that's a big part of why Mohawk bought Unilin. Unilin still has one of the better locking systems and that's one of the more popular ones. Um, Shaw uses, Shaw and Cortec, the, the, the brand of LVP we sell, uses a, what do they call it, tap and fold? Or drop lock. Drop lock. Yeah. Um, on their seven series, you know, a little bit higher end stuff. And it makes a difference when you're using a less expensive locking system, you can choose to do the end easy or the side easy and the other one's gonna be a little more difficult. There's a little twisting and contorting with this, uh, what'd you call it? Drop lock. Drop lock, bam, go to the next board. It's a it's a pretty big deal. Much faster. Much faster. Much easier. We did about, what, 1,500 feet down our Dalton store. Now granted, there, there weren't a lot of walls to cut around, but I think we did that in about two hours. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was flying, it really went together well. Okay, what lasts longer, Jason? Vinyl or laminate? I think your vinyls last longer. Um, you know, we don't really even deal with your laminates anymore. Um, vinyl has pretty much took over the laminate just because of the waterproof factor. Mm -hmm. um, the vinyls have, I think they have better finishes on them when you get into the aluminum oxide finishes. And they certainly cost less. And you can yeah, buy yes. high-end laminates that are waterproof right. and scratch resistant, but you're going to spend four or five dollars a foot on them. Yes. Um, so, but to answer the question, which lasts longer, vinyl or laminate for dollar, dollar, yeah, yeah vinyl. vinyl. Okay, uh, do you install flooring before, it says fitting a kitchen, I think they mean before the cabinets. Yeah. Do you put flooring in before you uh, put your cabinets in? It's according to the flooring you're using. Yeah. Lot, some people don't want to have to quarter round around their cabinets after they install their floor. Did I mention I hate quarter round? You did yeah. once, yeah. maybe twice. Um, if you're doing a wood floor, nailing it down, if it ain't a floating floor, yeah, it's fine to go ahead and do the whole thing and set your cabinets on top. A lot of your companies um, will avoid the warranty if you're putting vinyl plank and you fasten the cabinets on top of the LVP. That's because a floating because floor a has floating to be allowed floor to, has to, to move. Yes. So whether it's laminate, I mean whether it's laminate or LVP or even a, a floated oak, just a floated, floated floor, uh, engineered hard floor. Yes. Anything floating, you can't, you can't put cabinets fast. on top of. Right. You can. You got to drill a big hole around it, leave a bunch of expansion, but. And some just, of them still won't want to. Just do don't that. do it. Yeah. All right. Just forget I mentioned. Don't do it. Okay. Uh, is there a basement flooring option that's waterproof besides luxury vinyl plank? There is. What uh, is it? I believe it's Redwood Mohawk. 
Um, it's a waterproof laminate. Uh, there's a lot of different things to it. You know, it is a waterproof floor. It does have a core floor, core center though. Is it a? It's a MDF. MDF core? Yes, but they have, they put a special coating underneath too. Medium density fiber. Yeah. Um, I knew that. But there are other little things you gotta do. You know, you gotta caulk around your walls with the silicone and different things, but there are other options. I don't think the options are better than the vinyl plank. Though. Certainly going to cost a lot more. Oh yeah, they're going. The price is going to go up. Okay. So the question wasn't: Is there a basement flooring option that's better than luxury vinyl plank? Or it would be very easy right. to answer. Okay. Can you soundproof a floor? You could put those headsets over your ears, couldn't you? You could. That would work. Right. But that's probably not what they meant. Yeah, I don't really know how you would soundproof a floor. Well, um, you can add insulation, which is an underlayment underneath it. The problem is the more insulation, the more padding you put on, the more soundproof you make it, the more movement you allow your floor to make. And movement and floors are not a good combination, okay? Especially these click together floors. When they move, you're damaging them. And over yeah. time, you're going to have a degradation. You know that word? Yeah. You know what it was? Degradation in, um, in your joint Right. And but the companies come don't want you to put another no. layer under there because it'll void warranties too. It'll, you know. What is it about voiding these warranties? Is that all you want to talk about is void warranties? Some people are interested in that. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. This one. Same you, thing, ain't it? We may cut this out. It says, how do you soundproof a concrete floor? I don't want my floor to creak when I walk over my newly installed engineered floor. Is there a special prep for this? How in the world are you getting a concrete floor to creak? That's what I want to know. I don't know. If I was going to put an engineered floor over concrete, I'd just glue it down. And it can't move. It can't. But you know what? I think that Patrick messed up and ran two yeah. questions together because, you you know, you just don't have I don't think concrete. anybody out there asked that. Either. No, I think Patrick's an idiot, just yeah. to be honest with you. Um, All right. Can water damaged wood floors be fixed? Yeah. How? Oh, that's so simple. I'm gonna let you answer it. Can wood, can they be fixed? Yes. Um, if you catch it quick enough, um, throw you some dehumidifiers to get all the, more, the water out. Um, if they've gone beyond that, um, you can cut boards out and put new ones in. Um, you just have to have the same material. And really the question, we, we should have fixed that before we read it. Um, an engineered floor for water, if you get an engineered floor that's damaged, yeah, just cut the boards out if necessary. Um, sometimes there's, there's moisture barriers underneath those floors that hinder the, your ability to pull the water out. Where we usually run into moisture problems though is with a solid hardwood floor. And what happens with solid is, um, to give you for instance in, in oak, for every 2% of moisture that a piece of red oak gains, it can gain up to 20 thousandths of an inch. That's a lot, okay? Depends on if it's a flat sawn or vertically sawn piece of wood because it expands amongst the grain. Am I getting too technical? No, go ahead. Okay, so when you add moisture, it can be seasonal. You know, you open the doors and windows, you don't want to run the air conditioner, or it can be because of a leak, your dishwasher's leaking, the ice maker, you didn't know it. What happens over time is you will see that floor expand and it will manifest itself with cupping. You'll see each board will have a, I don't know, is that a concave face on it, um, that's how you know that you have moisture problems. You, once you notice that, it's time to take steps. You want to maybe put a dehumidifier in there. If it's really centrally located, you know there's probably a leak there, look for that leak. But most of the time it's a whole room. It'll, it'll be a little worse around the edges than it will in the center because it's, it's hitting your outside walls. Um, it's at that point you need to fix the problem. Turn your air conditioner on, okay? Check underneath the house. Is there plastic down? Is it ran up the walls? Are the, are the joints taped? That's not an installation issue. Sometimes it happens when a home is new. It, it is a, an environmental issue. You've got to remove moisture from the house. So once a floor becomes cupped, will it lay back down? Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Um, you'll need to go, to be certain, you'll need to go through a heating and a cooling system. That means if it cups in the spring, you're going to have to wait until the following spring. If it's still cupped the following spring, you can sand it. You're going to have to sand it to fix it. 
Um, the problem is if you want that floor to be perfect, you know, that, in that summer and you sand it to get the, the high ridges out of it, the next spring it may lay back down from the previous water yeah. or moisture in it. And then you got cracks. Now you got cracks between the boards or, you know, and, or you've got the edges that have been sanded off, sanded off. Um, that's another problem we run into. He mentions the cracks. You can put a floor in too wet. And that's, this is a, a for another question when we're not about to run out of time. Um, acclimating a floor that I know I saw it on our next page there if you acclimate wood into a wet house now your wood's wet you nail it down you turn the air conditioner on first thing it's going to do is shrink your have cracks between every board I tell you what, we're going to go for a day but if you want to check back on our next one we're, we're going to talk about that moisture and what you can do to keep that moisture out of your house and keep your floor perfect